Welcome to another episode of Muscle IQ Physical Therapy Education. Today we are pleased to listen to a talk by Dr. Robert Schleip, who is going to talk to us about the fascial web as a body-wide sensory network. Dr. Schleip is the author and editor of the book Fascia in Sport and Movement, as well as being a world-renowned researcher on fascia. Dr. Schleip, welcome, and we'll let you go ahead and get started. So, my talk is called Fascia is an Internal Sensor, and I think it relates very well. In this talk, I want to look at fascia as one of our richest sensory organs altogether. We have probably around several hundred thousand receptors in our body-wide tensional network that is called the fascial net. In this talk, I want to emphasize briefly on three aspects, on the sympathetic innervation of our fascial net, on the proprioceptive innervation, and on the, and I think that is the most interesting, the interoceptive capacity of our fascial network. What I'm leaving out is the nociceptive uh, capacity, that fascia can also be an origin of pain, but that is a subject by itself. So let's look at the sympathetic innervation of fascia, that has been very nicely proven by the laboratory at Heidelberg University in the team around Siegfried Menze. In fact, the majority of nerves that are terminating into fascia seem to be sympathetic nerve endings. So we have a very high richness of these nerves. And the question is, what are they doing there? Why do we have this intimate link between our autonomic nervous system and our fascial body network. What is quite interesting is some new studies done at Mannheim University where they exposed laboratory rats to what they consider to be a mild psychological stress one hour per day on 12 consecutive days. So you're not torturing them. You're not putting any painful manipulation, physically painful. Basically, it is an, a forced immobility. If you're a couch potato, you are doing that voluntarily. So you're sitting on your chair without any large movements. But here it is done without voluntary consent. That results in a reduced pressure pain threshold in deep muscular tissues. And there is an interesting relationship that if you have chronic stress, that that deep pressure pain threshold seems to be increased in opposition to other kinds of pain sensitivities. So let me then shift from the sympathetic uh, active, uh, capacity to proprioception. That means feeling my body in space and in movement there. A very interesting finding is that the density of proprioceptive nerve endings in fascia is not the same in various areas of the body. Carlos Deco and her team at Padua University have shown that certain fascial membranes that transmit a lot of mechanical tension, however, when you look at the proprioceptive function or the proprioceptive density, it is very little. And if you compare that with the retinaculum of the wrist shown on the right side, but also the retinaculum of the ankle, it has a lower mechanical significance than I had assumed. So it's so low mechanical tension comparatively, but a high proprioceptive innervation density. And that is now very interesting. So if you want to do fascial law osteopathic manipulation and increase the sense of their body in space and in movement from the inside, not through their eyes, but from the inside, then working in this area where you have retinacular tissues could be possibly or most likely uh, more rewarding than when you randomly work on tendons that have a high force transmitting function. The new research also coming from 
both the German group and the Italian group, has shown that the proprioceptive innervation density in superficial layers of fascia is much denser, much higher than in deeper layers of fascia. And that is very interesting. So the layer between the skin and the sliding layers of the skin and the superficial fascia and the dense layer of fascia profunda underneath, there is a sliding or a shearing zone. And in some areas you can slide it freely. On others, for example, if you had an injury, the sliding is inhibited. In this sliding zone or shearing zone, how we call it, you have the highest density for proprioceptive nerve endings. And that would mean that if you pay attention to the skin level, maybe you reinvent um, cupping again, or you roll the skin, it may possibly have, at least for proprioceptive innovation, a more profound effect than if your roughing practitioner plows all the way in to work on your psoas muscle because it considers it to be more deep and therefore to be more profound. So these are just two of the stimulations that came up in the last few years in regarding to the proprioceptive capacity of fascia. Thank you again, Dr. Robert Schleip, for giving us your talk about fascia as an internal sensor. We'll see you again next time at Muscle IQ Physical Therapy Education.